Welcome to the Artist Work Ethic Podcast. I'm Mike Pilak. I'm an actor, screenwriter, and filmmaker who's always looking to maximize my time and potential as I work to break in. In this podcast, I talk to artists of all kinds who have seen success in their fields about their process, habits, and work ethic. Today on the show is Steve Evans. Steve is a legendary record producer, engineer, mixer, and multi-instrumentalist. Having been a prominent producer for 30 years, he's worked with many artists such as The Cure, The Wonder Years, Newfound Glory, Snapcase, Glassjaw, The Dillinger Escape Plan, Misfits, Saves the Day, Senses Fail, Every Time I Die, The Use, countless others. His body of work contains so many records that have been highly influential to me personally, so it was really cool to, to sit down and talk to Steve. A couple quick things before we jump into the episode. I've talked in the past about myself working on breaking into screenwriting. Please check out blackoilfilms.com slash screenwriting. There you can check out some of the screenplays I've written. I have the first 10 pages of each one uploaded, but feel free to email me at theartistsworkethicpodcast at gmail.com, and I'd be happy to send you a full script if you're interested in reading. Last thing before we get into the episode, I would love anyone listening to subscribe, rate, and review the Artist's Work Ethic podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. It really helps us put the show out there for more people to listen to. All right, Steve, thank you for coming on with me today. Well, thanks for having me. So through punk rock, we both come from, you know, a, a DIY influenced background. How would Very you say, so. how would you say DIY and that ethic has contributed to your work ethic through the years? It definitely inspired me because, you know, I, before that, I, like, I was in bands and stuff like that. And it was more in like that, that Jersey, like pop metal or hair metal scene or whatever you want to call it or whatever. And it was a different, the, the, the ethos behind that then, I mean, you're still, obviously there was still a, you work hard and you, you're playing out, but there wasn't so much of like get in the van and go tour. It was like, Oh, let's get signed. And then we'll, we'll get a tour bus and we'll do this and we'll do that. You know what I mean? When I started uh, at my studio at tracks East in central Jersey um, and I started working with a lot of like the new Brunswick scene bands like in the new you know the, the punk bands and seeing like wow these guys like went to europe with nothing and like just figured it out and like you know it was pretty inspiring and you know the fact that you know we were doing things on a shoestring budget and you have to like make it work and not like oh we need to spend 10 more days in the studio it's like no we got to get it done in three days here we go let's <laughs> let's just make it happen and that's it and you and you just learn it's like now when I work on these records that I'm, I'm, you know, there's budgets and I spend all this time, you know, I go, how did I do those records in like five days? I don't really get it, but you did. The thing that's interesting to me is that now with digital and everything like that, people can make records anywhere and it's great. But I also think that the unlimited amount of choices that you have kind of will give you a sense of like option paralysis before it's like we have to get it done in these this amount of days and that's it it's like yes or no good good or bad yes good no go back you know start over do do something else but it was just very it was always make these like very quick choices and now i feel like there's a little some sense of that lost because there's there's there can be a little sense of urgency lost in the, in the fact that you have all this time, you have unlimited amount of time and choices available to you. You've, you've worked with a lot of bands over the years. Do you see a pretty clear connection between the bands who continue to work hard and the bands who do end up with that success? I mean, I kind of, when I was thinking about this question, I think of the Wonder Years, for example. Mm -hmm. And sure. it just, I mean, they've just been on a, it seems like for a very steady rise through their whole mm -hmm. career. And I, I just wonder from your perspective, the bands that find themselves in that situation, are they the bands that you see working the hardest? Yeah, there's no question about it. You know, obviously some bands 
lightning in a bottle can happen and everything like that. But it, to me, there's, there's no um, mystery there. It's the bands that work and those guys have just an unbelievable work ethic. And they're all still, even like in their off time, you know, Nick records. So, so does Matt, like the, you know, Casey records and he does consulting for bands and stuff like that. And, and Dan Supi, the singer, you know, he's got, his solo stuff, he's got the Aaron West project. He's got, you know, he does just a million things, plus being a dad and raising two kids, you know, it's just uh, these guys all just like it's it's inspiring. It's been inspiring to to see them go from 20 something year olds when I first worked with them to to where they are now and just having a really tireless work ethic. And it's it's great. So do you think your work ethic comes from something in maybe how you were raised or some other factor in your life so along what, the way? I I think so. My father is a bit of a workaholic. He's, I mean, my dad's 82 years old, still works because he loves to work. That's yeah. what he does. And I love to work. I mean, I do, uh, you know, I can get, I can procrastinate on things, but at the same time, I love still after I've been doing this almost 30 years and I still get a complete charge out of what I do. I love those moments. And, and, you know, when you're working on a, on a song, with the band you're creating and, and there's that little moment, I call it like a moment of discovery when something just clicks in the studio and you go, Oh my God, like it's the greatest thing ever. And I still, it still gives me a charge and I still love creating. And every day, I'll have these little moments. I'm in the studio and be like, man, how great is this? This is just the coolest thing ever. And I've always loved, I've always, I, I played in bands, like I said earlier, but I always love being in the studio. Being in the studio is my absolute favorite thing. I've always loved it. How, how are you structuring your day to, to balance productivity and the studio and just your, your life as well? Uh, it's different because like my wife and I are on such, we're such opposite. My wife is a very much an early bird and I am incredibly a night owl. I, I do my best. My, I feel like I'm at my, my most creative at night when the sun goes down. Not to say I can't be creative. I'm, you know, I, I I've adjusted, but for the most part, I like those moments like <laughs> You know, I used to work, a lot of artists I worked with, like, you know, worked at like, you know, one in the morning, two in the morning. You know, I, I don't quite do that as much as I used to. Sometimes I do, but for the most part, I don't. But there, there's always that thing, that ethic, that thing of like, when basically the world's asleep and then me and somebody else or me and the band are in there, like, for like, nobody knows what we're doing, but we're up here making stuff. Yeah. You know, that's, I like that. I like that kind of like, the, you know, so my friend, my friend, one of my friends, uh, Mike from this this uh, progressive metal band, Symphony X, that we work with, he always, always, he's the same way, and he's always like, you know, the cool hours that nobody knows about. <laughs> it's, it's funny, my I I kind of like will alternate where I'll take a few months and I'll be up late, and then I'll kind of almost switch it up, almost kind of unconsciously, and I'll be waking up early. And my mm -hmm. wife always says that while she's asleep, I live this whole other life. And it's really, it's really just me typing on a keyboard mostly, you know, but, right. um, but yeah, same, same thing. Like I, I, I love when everyone else is asleep, love my wife, but when she's asleep, when the kids are asleep and just no one's bothering me and I know no one's going to be around for a couple hours is, mm -hmm. is when I do my best as well. Exactly. That's, that's always the, the thing I've, and then I know like the, the, the artist I'm working with now, Craig, he does the same thing, but early in the morning, he'll get up at five in the morning and love working from like five to eight when yeah. people are just kind of waking up. It's the same, essentially the same thing, but shifted forward a few hours. That's all. So I'm a huge list person in, in thinking about something like goal setting. How do you, you know, long-term, short-term, how do you keep yourself organized and kind of focused on what you need to be doing daily, weekly, whatever. Uh, daily, weekly, it's it's interesting because I wish I was as organized in my personal life as I was in the studio. <laughs> but the studio is where the studio is where I'll make lists. My wife's a big list maker in nor in on in my regular life. I'm not. 
I'm just like, ah, whatever. I fly by the seat of my pants kind of more than, more than not. And it kind of drives my wife crazy. But in the studio, you know, we usually make like a progress board. And so it's like, everything's mapped out. There's a grid and I know, okay, these are the songs. Here's what we've done. Here's what we need to do. But it's not so much like stick to the list and be rigid. It's more about just keeping in check what we know we've done and what needs to be done. Because I'll always, same thing. I still kind of go with the flow. Well, like, uh, what's, what do you feel? Because like, you know, especially in the studio, it's like, ah, the singer, ah, oh, my voice feels a little rough. Okay, let's not do vocals. Let's jump to something else. What can we do? You know, as long as there's boxes open, as long as there's, you know, everything is, doesn't have a check in it, it's like, okay, well, there's lots of stuff to do. We're not going to run out of things to do. So let's just jump around. And and I, I don't mind that. I, you know, I'm I'm fine with jumping around. Actually, it keeps it kind of fresh. How important would you say that persistence and perseverance are to a successful work ethic, specifically in the arts? Because I think that's one of those things, you know, the longer I'm at this stuff, the more I see how, in, in my opinion, important it is. Because um, it's it's so yeah. easy to quit all these things that we're trying to do, you know? Oh, absolutely. Well, absolutely. What's, I guess Patience. what's your perspective there? Well, it's persistence, perseverance, but it's me. It's the other P. It's patience more than anything. And I, I'm an incredibly patient person. And it's just, you have to just kind of, you know, because part of it, and I get the drive of the person, well, it's persistence as far as the drive goes. And, you know, you have to keep trying at it because, you know, you're going to fail. You know, I always I, I always make these baseball analogies because I'm not a huge sports fan, but I am a big baseball fan. And it's like, I make the baseball analogy because baseball is is a game of failure. Like if you fail seven out of 10 times, you're awesome. You're an all-star. <laughs> you're a legend. You're batting 300. Like that's, and that's failing seven out of 10 times. So it's like, you know, you just got to keep going, keep going. And I know the you know, the, all the other business edges going from failure to failure and all that stuff like that. But it's, there's, there's some truth to that, but it's, it's also just the, the patience and to have like the kind of inner calm to go, okay, everything's going to be cool. Just have the patience to be persistent and persevere. How have you dealt with rejection that's come your way in your career? You know, whether it's, <laughs> you know, anytime well. throughout those years. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, look, it's, it happens, you know, and it, it's happened on records that I've worked with that, you know, weren't received very well or the, you know, the high expectations and the record didn't do well or, or uh, the band tries something different. And I happen to be the guy that did the different record with the band that people are expecting one thing. And then it's just like, you know, and then I basically know I'm going to have to be the one that to a degree gets thrown under the bus a little bit. And it's like, I didn't make them make that record. <laughs> they wanted to make that record. My job is to make sure that, what they want to, it's their record. I always, it's, you know, that's what I say to the, to the artists. It's like, it's not my record, it's your record. So I'm just trying to maximize whatever it is that they want to do. You know, over the years, especially, like I said, almost 30 years, I, I've grown a thicker skin. When I was, you know, in my 20s, when I do a record and people don't like it, like, what do you mean? These people are crazy. You know, I didn't take it as well as I can. I take it now. And rejection and, and failure is, again, it's a huge part of this business. It's going to, this is what's going to happen. I mean, you know, you being like a writer, not everything's going to be great as well received as others, you know, For if, sure. you, if you hit it out of the park every single time, then you almost don't learn anything, you know? Yeah, so. totally. Well, my, my last question was going to be, are you a night person or an early morning person? But, but we covered that. So you answered, you answered the question <laughs> as, um, as, as it is like eight, nine o'clock and I am drinking coffee and yeah. I'm just, you know, I'll be up for many hours. I mean, I'm, I'm drinking diet Pepsi. So. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so anything that you want to plug or talk about before we go? Not that, not offhand. I can't think of, what do I think of plugging? Uh, well, I have an STL tones expansion pack, a producer pack that just came out. Well, it came out a couple months ago. So if you're, you know, if you're a guitar player and you want, you use it like the software amps and STL tones, you can uh, go grab my pack. Awesome. Well, Steve, thank you for coming on with me today. Oh, thanks so much, man. Thank you so much for listening today. Please subscribe to the Artist Work Ethic Podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts, and please rate and review the show. Follow us on Instagram at the Artist's Work Ethic. 
and check out theartistsworkethic.com 